Cobra here is found in the rubble here of my garden, and that's very common. You often find cobras in situations like this, and it's an amazing snake. Most people think it's one of the most aggressive snakes. They think that this is a, a snake that will intentionally attack you, it will go for you. That's not aggression. That snake's merely trying to warn me off. It's standing up so that I can see it, and I'm supposed to now move away from it. If I move around it here, you'll see how it follows me. It's, of course, going to follow every step that I make. Snakes respond to movement, the cobra especially. I'm going to show you something really interesting here. This uh, cobra is really warning me with its hood. And if I grab it really gently and restrain it, hold it like this for a moment, once the snake feels that it's completely overpowered, once it feels that it cannot do anything else, that it cannot move away from me, cannot spread its hood, biting's not working, it may do something which is going to really interest you. It may pretend to be dead. And even if I move my hand over it, it's responding completely differently to the way it was a moment ago. Isn't that incredible? Snakes are so fascinating. are reptiles most of us prefer not to meet. And they're wary of us, too, which is why they hiss or rattle to warn us off. Such warnings are ignored at our peril. But a snake will only bite in defense, and only if it feels gravely threatened. It's easy to imagine the snake as an aggressor, the snake in the grass, a deadly foe. But why does this image send a shiver of fear down our spines? In shape and movement, they are so different from us that legend and folklore have given them a sinister reputation they don't really deserve.
How can we understand an animal that smells with its tongue? Or that hears with its whole body, sensing vibrations? The hypnotic stare of its unblinking eye can seem as alien as its apparent rebirth through the shedding of its skin, sloughed off like a scaly ghost of itself. Among them are giants that storybooks say are a hundred feet long and ready to strangle unwary jungle explorers. And yet, there is this little guy, a thread snake, very friendly and not deadly at all. There is even beauty and grace in some as they go upon their bellies, silently through the trees. But where did snakes come from? An animal that looked much like some other reptiles alive today. It's hard to believe that snakes have anything in common with creatures like this. But in fact, every reptile descended from the same ancestor. This primitive ancestor led to two groups of animals, turtles and all other reptiles. All through the age of the dinosaurs and during the emergence of lizards, snakes were nowhere to be seen. But there were legless lizards, and it was from these that snakes evolved. For 110 million years, they have been living side by side with other reptiles. Today, there are more than two and a half thousand different species of snake. Hidden within their bodies, vestiges remain of the legs they lost. But snakes, with a skull, backbone, and a multitude of ribs, are able to move quickly in several ways. The serpentine crawl of the cobra. Most snakes move like this. The movement creates little ridges in the ground, which the snake pushes against to propel itself forward. When you're short and fat like this puff adder, throwing cobra-style loops is impossible. Instead, the muscles act on the ribs. As the ribs move, the snake's scales grab hold of the ground. And with a series of rhythmical contractions, the snake rows along in the sand. The famous sidewinder favors the serpentine wave. And like the cobra, it can push itself against the ridges it nudges up in the sand. By moving sideways, it needs only two points of contact on the very hot sand. At any one time, most of its body is held in the air. Legs? Who needs them? There are different problems for a tree-climbing python in a rainforest. To reach across a gap, it can stiffen sections of its body, becoming its own ladder from branch to branch. This sinuous and flattened body, with its broad tail working like an oar, could be mistaken for an eel. But this is no fish. It's a sea snake. Most snakes can swim, though even the sea snake must interrupt its hunting now and then for a breath of air at the surface. As hunters, in water or on land, snakes are silent and efficient killers. A rattlesnake has more than its bite to work with. Its tongue constantly tastes the air, scenting for prey. Its body senses ground vibrations, even the footsteps of a mouse. 
standing still is no defense. The Rattler is also able to sense body heat.